Hi everyone, welcome to my sewing room. Hope you got your coffee, your tea, cozy slippers on. We're gonna be a while. So today we are going to be talking about textured embroidery. There are so many ways that you could do texture embroidery. So right now, you can see I'm wearing one. This is permanently on my shirt. This is um, a design that is in the MySoNet software. And what I did to this was, and I'm like just jumping into this. So here we go. Um, what I did with this one, this is, it's not freestanding lace. This was actually in an embroidery design that I took apart, took into modifying the MySoNet software, and um, I resized it and I stitched it out on two layers of organza. So I didn't use any stabilizer. I just made sure that my bobbin and my top thread matched 100%. And I just stitched it out on those two layers of organza. And after it finished stitching, I just trim really close to um, the stitches. And there you have it. Freestanding texture adds dimension. And that's pretty much what we're going to be talking about today. So I just want to do a little bit of housekeeping. Say hello to Meredith, Amy, and Ryan. And if you have any questions, go ahead, type them in the chat, and they will relay them to me. So... Here we go. And if there's ever a Facebook Live that you guys want to see, put that in the chat too. We're always open for suggestions. So let's get started. The, the easiest and the fastest and the cheapest, dirtiest way to add texture to embroidery is with your applique. Instead of using a flat fabric, you can always um, replace it with some fabric that you created yourself with maybe... Um, decorative stitches you had uh you can use makey in place of a, a flat fabric there's just buy buy a textured fabric that you can replace um your regular quilters cotton with so that is one easy way to do it so i'm going to talk about applique for a second what i'm going to show you in a moment isn't exactly applique but i kind of made it applique so i made this quilt a while ago And it was a quilt as you go. And you know what happens when you quilt as you go? The quilt is done when you're done, except for the binding. There's no, there's no place where you can put an embroidery on it and have it hidden necessarily in between that sandwich. I found this embroidery design on my sonet. And that is um a ribbon embroidery using the ribbon attachment that Foff has. Um, and those are still available. So if you are interested, um, I would take a look at that. I am having lots of fun with it. I don't know if you can see over in my corner, I have the sugar skull that too was done with the ribbon attachment. And it just adds some really nice texture. And in case you didn't know this, you can also create your own ribbon attachment designs within the MySoNet software on the embellishment tab. So it's not it's not just, you know, what you find on SoNet, all the pre-made stuff. You can also create something for yourself and it, you know, you'll get more use out of that, that attachment as well. But what I'm going at is I really wanted that embroidery design on, on this quilt because you can see that the main fabric was some sheep. So I had to think outside the box and whatever is going to be stitched on the front, of course, it's going to show all the way through the back. So there wasn't much color in this. What I decided to do was I wound bobbins with every color that I used on the front. Um, give me one second. I have this hot tool right here and it's in my way and I know I'm going to burn myself. So let me put that on the floor. So then I'll just burn my foot. Um, so what I did was I went and found this is a it's a felt and it's it has a, a a fuzzy texture to it. So the first thing that stitched out was the face and the ears and all that. So I wound bobbins so that when it came through the back, it's going to be the same on the front. 
And when it was time to stitch out the ribbon portion, I floated this felt underneath the hoop so that as it was stitching the ribbon stitches down, it was stitching this, this piece of felt down. And you, if you can see, you have all of that stippling. Well, those are the stitches that are from, from the ribbon attachment. And because it was a felt, it doesn't fray. So I was able to um, trim it in a shape that I wanted. And then I was able to have something on the front and the back, two different textures, all in one. And it solved my dilemma. Easy peasy. Okay. Any questions about that? I'm just going to go through a few things here and uh, show you some things. Um, the other the other one I want to talk to you about is, since we're talking about um, applique and using different things, we, uh, we've seen lots of um, beaded sweaters. I am a fan of beaded sweaters. I have a whole entire Pinterest page on just beaded sweaters from the 50s, from the 60s, just and embroidered. I'm just a huge fan of it. So we can embroider our sweaters. We've seen embroidery on our sweaters before many times. Um, and that gives you somewhat close to the look of, of the beaded sweater. It gives you the idea. But to have actual beads on it is a little different. You can't really embroider beads. We can add our rhinestones. That does add texture. But I took it just a step further on this sweater. And if we get really close to it, I'm going to get close. Hopefully, if it doesn't get fuzzy, those are seed beads. So what I did there was this was an embroidery design that's on my stonet, and it's a it's a light stitched out hand look embroidery, which was ideal for this sweater knit, so it wasn't too heavy. And I omitted some of the stitches. I took that design into Stitch Editor, and I'll show you what I what I did here in Stitch Editor. Let me share my screen with you. This one. And so this is the design. Um, that sweater actually was two, four hoopings. I had two small hoopings and one large hooping to get it all the way down in the front. But if you see within here, within this petal, we have those lines there. I did not want those lines there um, because I wanted to put those seed beads in. And I actually glued those seed beads on with um, a very heavy industrial uh, glue that we use in the costume shop. Um, so let me go into modify. And if I uncheck everything that I want to keep, all I need to do is box around this, hit delete, and it's now gone. So now I have this nice open space that I can uh, add something to it without those lines getting in the way. So I'm using my software and my embroidery machine and just creating a whole new texture. So that was super easy. I did that to um, both designs. And then of course I printed, um, I printed my templates and laid them out, um, I pinned them to the sweater so I knew exactly where I was going to, where the design was going to lay. And and I was able to scan it in. Um, I have the icon too, so I was able to scan it in. But those of you who have a Wi-Fi capable machine, don't forget you have the app that you can download and it has the design placement in that app, which is a great friend. Then I was able to take a picture of that template pinned to the sweater and take it into the software and easily line that design up within the hoop. So it was in the right place. And before I started stitching, I just, you know, unpinned the template and away I went. And I did back it with um, water soluble stabilizer. And I, of course, I had a layer of um, water 
water solvy on top to keep those stitches from sinking in because they, some of them are kind of small stitches, but it worked out. It was exactly what I hoped for. I wish I had a pink sweater in the house because I would have done it on pink, but all I had was black. So there you have it. If you have any questions on that, um, go ahead, put it in the chat box. Um, so, and that sweater, because of the glue that I used, I am able to wash it. So just so you know. All right. The next texture I'm going to talk about is felt. I'm not going to go too much into the felt because I know that Mickey Hudson did a wonderful Facebook Live not too long ago on felting. She gives you the ins, outs, upsides, downs of it. So I would go ahead and go on to YouTube or Facebook. You can still find that on Facebook, on the Foff face Facebook page, and take a look at that um, because there are three different ways that you can do felting in the hoop. And you will need to have the felting starter kit to get you going. Um, there are certain things in there that you absolutely have. It's not just putting in a felting needle. You do need um, the needle guard and the um, felting bobbin. And there is also a felting plate in it. And what I did there was, again, it's, it's freestanding. So it's texture. So I also like to knit. And I put the two together. So this is freestanding and I was able to embellish my, my fingerless gloves with a beautiful flower. And because I did it myself, I got to choose the colors and made it my own. I also used it on a sweater that's in the background that you probably can't see. Um, I used it as a, um, a snap cover. So that's another use that you can um, embellish things with. So it's not just embellishments. Um, you could put it on garments. You can add uh, texture to quilts. You can just whatever you want to add texture to, you can add texture to it. Um, can you share the name of the glue? Yes, it's E6000. And just so you know, E6000 just came out with a new glue. It's called Quick Dry. As soon as I saw that, had to buy it. Um, so yep, it's E6000 and you can find that, you know, basically at any of your craft stores. Uh, I use it a lot. Just, um, there's a, a slight scent to it. Um, I don't want to say scent. It's more of an odor. I'm used to it, but it may, um, it may not, uh, be kind to some other people. If you will, you may not like it, but for me, um, I love the glue because it can be washed. It also keeps it very, um, flexible. Okay. So one more before I get into something a little bit more. I know I've showed this before, this book cover. This is done on marine vinyl and behind it has inner form or in our form. However you want to say that it's um, IN-R-Form. And this design is on the MySonet library. It is a textured, I think it's called fabric texture or something like that. I don't remember, um, but there's quite a few different designs of this one. And what that's, that tight stippling does is it pushes down the in our form so that um, it'll raise it up after it's done stitching. And for this, I did not use any stabilizer. This is a marine vinyl and I was able to just hoop the marine vinyl all by itself, no stabilizer, and do the stitching, except the stabilizer that I did have really wasn't used as stabilizer, was the in-art form. And that was just a, a piece big enough um, for the size of the embroidery. So that was an easy project. It, it does have a nice look of leather. And again, the marine vinyl can be found at any one of your um, craft stores. Okay, so how this whole entire Facebook Live got started was I was working with Puffy Foam. Um, there were some uh, things that I wanted to do. So we're going to talk a little bit more about Puffy Foam. And if you're not familiar with Puffy Foam, um, it is a texture. It goes underneath your stitching. So it is something that lives underneath the embroidery. So let me go over to this camera and here you can see 
this is how the puffy foam is. So if you are familiar with applique in the hoop, it's very similar to, um, to that because it's going to stitch out a placement stitch first. And then you lay your, oops, can't see my hand. Then you lay your foam. And this is a three millimeter foam. There are different um, thicknesses of foam. And when you when you purchase a design, you hopefully they'll have it in the notes what size this um, des the design was made for because the different sizes of foam, the thickness of the foam does make a difference. Um, you can, in our software, these are letters from our software. So we have a choice of going from two millimeter all the way up to six millimeter. This is um, set for a three millimeter because this is the size foam that I have. So it really does make a difference because those satin stitches are created to go over that foam and cover those edges. So this is the puffy foam in its second stage where you can see it outlined it. And then here I stopped the stitching so that you can, so you can see like how it's, how it's working. And then this is the end result. And then this just peels away just like that. And I hope you can see the dimension that is that is in that. Puffy foam is something that you normally see on baseball hats. It's very popular within baseball hats, but it can be used for other things as well. I mean, it could go on quilts. It can, uh, this, um, this is a font from the software. It, it's the athletic font. So that would look really cool for um, team sweatshirts or something like that, group sweatshirts. Um, it can really stand out. I created, um, I made this little bag, I was working on a project and I really wanted, I think you can see it here. I'm trying to give you a side view how it looks. Um, uh, how big it is, how puffy it is. There are just some things that you want to keep in mind with puffy foam. It does need to be under a satin stitch. You do want to make sure that you match the um, foam with the embroidery design. In our software, we do have the fonts available. And let me share one more time because I can show you those fonts. Yeah, let me go to this one. So this is what I sent over to the machine. And if we go here, I'm in my letters tab and there is a category for foam and there are six different fonts that you can choose from. This is the one that I chose was the athletic block. And it, you have an option of what size you of puffy foam you want to use. So here my, my design. And if you look up to the design panel, I'm hovering over the gold and you can see it's giving me some information. It's telling me the thread, it's telling me the thread color, and it's telling me that the puffy foam size is 4.0. I can change that. The 4.0 is the default, but if we double click on that, and here under puffy foam, I don't know if you guys ever paid attention to this side, um, when you're in your software, most of the time we're looking at this because we're just trying to change colors, but you have these options over here as well that you can have, can have fun with. And these work well with the super designs. Don't mean to get off track, but they work well with the super designs that are built into the software. You can change something from um, felting into um, a stitching and create a, um, a quilt design just from going from felting to, to adding stitches to that. Um, but here's the, in the puffy foam, if I click on that, you see I have options between two and six millimeters. And we'll just go with three and say, okay. And then I would send it over to my machine if I'm ready to go. Again, hopefully when you purchase the designs, oops, I have to stop sharing. 
when you purchase a design from elsewhere, it will, it hopefully they'll tell you what size foam you're using. We do have some foam embroideries that are in the MySonet library. Um, they're, they're kind of fun. I was playing with them. Um, one of them, I, I don't know what I did with it, but yesterday was not my day. I was trying to stitch it out. I totally overlooked the fact that it had an applique behind it. So I missed that. It, yeah, it was just the day. Um, so anyway, uh, back to the foam. There are different places that you can purchase the foam. So there is this huge debate on if you can use the foam from the craft store or if you need to have a particular embroidery foam. Well, my answer to you is, is I think you can use them both, to be honest with you. This is the foam that um, is made for embroidery. And then, not that you can really see a difference, this is the foam that I bought at, at the craft store. When I was doing some testing, I used them both. Um, and again, they come in different millimeters. This is a design that I was digitizing and I wanted to do a test sew out. And this is done, again, with one of our fonts. I don't know if you can see the, the height of it. This was done with one of our fonts and it was done with a two millimeter foam. So I was able to go in and say, yep, I need a two millimeter foam. That foam is from the craft store. Um, I had it on hand, so it worked out. And you can see it worked out okay. There, I had no issues. I found in both, both embroidery, both foams, that some, sometimes you have little pokies through them. Um, and I'm gonna show you that and how to get rid of those in a moment. To me, that's, you know, it, it's the nature of the beast. You may find that. So when you're going to use puffy foam, make sure that you're using a thread that matches your, your foam or comes very close to it. Because if your satin stitches don't cover it completely, um, if it shows through just a little bit, it may not be that noticeable. The other difference that I found between the two was, yes, the foam for embroidery has a little more, it's a little more dense. It's a little heavier. And I'm not saying heavier because one's a three millimeter, one's a two millimeter. I'm saying if I had both, um, a, both of them were three millimeters, the one for embroidery seemed to be a little bit um, a beefier, if you will. Um, the one for embroidery foam, it did tear away a little bit easier than the one I bought in the craft store. So I know there's a huge debate that, you know, people say, yes, you can use it. No, you can't use it. Um, I'm going to tell you, do what I did. Do some tests. Try them both out. I have, and it's hard to see this, it's deep purple on, on black, but yeah, that's hard to see. Let me go to this camera and see if, see if you can see it better here. So I was testing out both of them. So the P is done with the, um, the embroidery foam and the R is done with the craft foam. And if you look at it, you really don't see much of a difference. I do see a little bit here of some of the foam coming through, um, but I've also seen foam come through on the embroidery, um, made for embroidery as well. So I'm gonna say go for it. Now, as for washing, I have not washed um, the one from the craft store. I have what I've had something um, in the past that I've washed with the embroidery foam and that seemed to wash okay. I'm, I'm guessing that the other foam is probably going to wash the same way. Um, but again, all I can suggest to you is give it a try. Try them both. See how, how you like it. You may find more colors available from the craft store than you do in the package. And the package, I believe you have to buy as a package. You can't buy individual sheets. So if you were doing something that 
that you had no interest of having black or gray or any of those colors. So it's, you know, one may weigh out the other. Okay, so another tip is I want to show you is if you look at this one. Oh, that's a good one. You can see that. So do you see the blue foam? I purposely did that so that I can show you this. And that's what I mean by pokies. Sometimes it, the felt uh, or the satin stitching doesn't cover it. And I used um, three millimeter for this. The W was set up for um, three millimeters and I still um, got that little poke through. So my tool that I was telling you was super hot. This is just a craft tool. It's a heat craft tool. And I'm gonna take it over here to this other camera so that you can see this because this really is like magic. So you have two things that you can do. You can give it a shot of steam with your iron and that does shrink down that foam a little bit. If you still continue to have what everybody is calling pokies, you can just take this heat tool and do you see how it's just starting to go away? It is a little more time consuming. Puffy foam is not something I do a lot of, but if I'm going to do it, I don't mind taking this time and uh, taking care of these little poke throughs. So there you have it. And if you don't mind slightly tedious work, something you could do in front of your TV, there you go. So it's almost like magic how it just um, took that away. On my, and I'm going to unplug this since I showed it to you so that I don't get burned. Um, so as I showed you on my little pride bag, um, I did use the embroidery foam on this one because I had the package and I had all of the colors I needed. I did have some uh, foam peeking through. But I just took, when I was um, at the iron, I gave it a nice little steam. It did shrink some of that down. So I didn't even need to pull out my heat tool for that one. So any questions on puffy foam? Nope. Okay. Let's move forward. The next texture that is fun is we have yarn. You can do yarn. There's a few different ways that you can do yarn. There is yarn embroidery. And then also we have designs. And I'm sorry, I don't have a sample of it because I haven't done it yet. But there is crochet in the hoop, if you will. So you can make hundreds and hundreds of granny squares and you can piece them together and you can create a scarf without even know how to knit or how to crochet. Um, that is on my my wish list to do when I have when I'm actually home and have time. I want to give that a try because it intrigues me. I'm a knitter. I'm not a crocheter, but I am a knitter. So it does, um, it does, you know, like I said, pique my interest and I wouldn't mind taking a look at it and giving that a try. I know that you do want to use water soluble stabilizer, the fibrous for that, um, because you will wash it away and it is basically um, a standalone lace, um, but you're using yarn instead of thread, if that makes sense. Okay. So then I'm, I'm talking so fast, I'm running out of stuff to say. And I thought I'd had too much. So this next one I wanna show you since we're talking about um, the yarn is this design. This design again is in my Sonet. And this has a few different techniques to it. It has, it has yarn. It has raw edge applique, and it also has thread velvet. Now this technique has been around for a very long time. Actually, the puffy foam has been around for a long time. The thread velvet has been along, around for a very long time, and so has the felting. So these are not new. These are also things that can be done on any, any of the inverter machines that you have. You just need to make sure that you have the hoop at the right size for that set embroidery. This design, this is done with the 360 by two, uh, 360 by 350 hoop. So that's the turnable hoop. Um, 
If you want to get into learning how to use the turnable hoop, this is a great design to get into because it is very forgiving. When you're using the turnable hoop, it'll stitch one side and then you turn it and it stitches the other side. But before you stitch up that, start stitching that other side, you do need to use your precise positioning and get it lined up to the other side. Otherwise, it might be slightly down. And the reason why you need, or slightly up, depending on where they land it. And the reason being is because you're stitching one half of the hoop. And so fabric is pulling on that side of the hoop, but nothing's happening on this side of the hoop. So you do need to take some time and line it up. Like I said, this design, it was very forgiving. So if you have that large turnable hoop, pull up this design. I believe this one is built into the Epic 2. If it's not this design, a uh, sister design to this is in the Epic 2. They're also on the MySoNet library. So bring those up. Take those out for a test run if it's the first time with your hoop. That hoop is, um, it comes standard with the Icon 2, but it can still be used on the Icon 1, the Creative Vision, Creative Sensation, and I believe it can be used on the 4.5. Amy, Ryan, or Meredith, correct me if I'm wrong if it can't be used on the 4.5, but I believe it can. And it is um, it is a separate purchase. Can do lots of stuff with that. I've I've been falling in love with that gosh darn hoop. Um, I have other things that I have in, in the closet that's not finished, um, but I'm really enjoying the fact that I can have an embroidery that large without um, without rehooping and with the precise positioning on the machine. It really is not hard to get that lined up. It really isn't. And I think Karen Charles did a really good job of. Precise positioning, I believe, for a Facebook. Um, I believe she did. Worth looking at. So Amy had said, Amy had said that yes, the 4.5 with the large E unit can you can use the uh, turnable hoop. And then there was also another question: what machine are you using to do the crochet? Again, the crochet can be done in any of the embroidering machines. It, all it comes down to is the size of your hoop. How many of those squares, and I should bring that up since someone's asking about it. I'll bring up one of those designs in, in the my sonet so you can see it. It all depends on how many you can fit into your hoop. If you can fit multiple into your hoop, and I think maybe we should do a Facebook Live on this because we're getting questions on it. Um, you can connect them by overlapping them. So you know what? Let's go off the beaten path. Let me share. Let me share my screen. Um, and let's go back here. And if I come down here, so this is my sonnet. And don't forget, every Friday we post new designs, so it's worth checking out just to see. Hey, what's out there? If I go to all designs. And I should show you this anyway. Off to the side, one of the options is you can search designs by techniques. And there are a bunch of techniques. And I will be honest with you, these techniques have been around for a long time. They are not new. We've had them. The only one that's new is maybe the... Um, the ribbon attachment, that one is, that one's fairly new within the last few years. But as for the crochet and the cross stitch and all of those, those aren't new. Uh, so let's go to crochet. And let's see if I can find a quick design here. I might be better off going to, I think I have some saved in my favorites. And if you see a design that you like, you have that little heart, you can just go ahead. Oh, it's taking its time. Sorry. You can just add that to your favorites. Amy or Meredith, do you know um, offhand? My mind's just sitting still. Like a name of one of the 
crochet designs or a number because mine, I'm just hourglassing right now. Let me go back. Yeah, I'm just sitting still now. That kind of stinks. Oh, the technology. I'm, I'm looking somewhere else real quick to see if I have one saved somewhere. I don't. They are checking for me. So let me see if I have one in my favorites. So I see designs. There's a little heart. You can click on the heart and it adds it to your favorites. So here are some of the puffy foam um, designs that are in my Sonet. So you can see I, I saved them so that I can have easy access to them. This is one of the designs that I was showing you. It's it's um, in the turnable hoop. It has um, raw edge applique, thread velvet, and the yarn as well. Um, yarn floral circle. All right, so let's look that up. Um, yarn for thank you. Yarn floral. Okay. So this is what they this is what they look like. And when you're on my Sonet, they may not look like anything to you when you first look at them. But what they do and is there you go. It gives you an example of what it will look like. So that is done with yarn. So you're stitching it on a water soluble stabilizer. And the stitching is stitching the yarn down. And then you'll wash it away. And this one, I want to see. This one does not have a booklet with it. On some of them, you do have um, booklets. And they also have other things that go with it. So there's more, um, more of those yarn designs. And again, you have borders, you have corners. So it all really depends on how many you can fit into your hoop. So if you can connect them, so it may be something where you do need to do, if you're making a scarf, even, you know, with the icon too, to make a scarf, our hoop is only, our largest hoop is only um, 360 is the longest hoop we have. So we would need to do multiple hoopings and you just, when you hoop the other one, you, you attach the new designs to the previously stitched design so that they're ever so slightly overlapping each other so that they're connecting all the way down. So if you can fit nine of those squares in your hoop, then you're, you know, that's less hooping you have to do. So again, could be done on any of the machines. It just depends on how big you want to make it and how many you can fit in your hoop. And then there is also endless inserted yarn. So there's also that one as well. And you would want to use, and let me go back to stop sharing. And we have our yarn embellishment foot set and it does have a special foot with a hole in it and it also has these little these little hooks on your machine at the back of your machine you will notice two little slots um, right on the top um, on the icon two it's um, I have to lift up my handle to see them but these would slide into those slots and this is your thread guides, your tension, if you will, and thread guides for your yarn. So it would come from the back. So you would lay your ball of yarn in the back. You would thread it through this. It, it does come with a, a little 
threader here because you do need to take your yarn through the hole in the foot and, and feed it through. And then as the machine is stitching in embroidery mode, it's pulling some of that yarn and tacking that yarn down. This is, um, I am a fan of walking away from my embroidery machine because I have the app and I have the monitor on my um, phone. This is not a technique I would walk away from. I, I, do, stand, I do stay in the room um, just because the yarn could get caught up on something. Um, it could get caught on your machine. It's a rarity. Please don't let me scare you. I encourage you to try this. Um, but yeah, I don't walk away with that one. And this, this project here, this embroidered design is done with the same, with the same foot attachment. And it's done in the same way, but instead, but it's not, um, it's not interlocking. It's just being used as, as a texture. Okay. I forgot what I was talking about. Oh, while we're talking about this, let's go ahead and talk about thread velvet. Again, not, not new. Um, it is a fun technique. And if you look at it, you can see that it has, um, it's pretty deep. And the first time you stitch out a thread velvet, sit with your machine, close your eyes and listen to it. Because the very first time I did throw thread velvet, I thought there was something wrong with my machine. What it is, it's a, it, you're stitching layers upon layers upon layers of satin stitches on top of each other. And it'll do a, a few layers and then it does a, a bean stitch around the shape that it just did. And then it does more satin stitches and then a bean stitch and then even more satin stitches. So there's maybe four, four or five layers of satin stitches it does make a very distinct noise when you stitch that out. So don't panic. Just get to know that noise um, so that when you go to stitch out more thread velvet designs, you're not, you're not freaking out thinking, what's wrong with my machine? Usually thread velvet, you're using multiple colors for that thread velvet. So because it's layered and when you slice open into it, using different colors, contrasting colors or blending colors, what it does is it gives you even more dimension. So not just texture, but it gives you dimension um, to do that. And the, what you need to do is when it's done stitching is you need to slice into it. Uh, you can use a seam ripper, but I have found this little tool. It is a seam ripper, but it looks more like a scalpel. It's a very sharp. It does come with the lid. Make sure you use your lid. And what I like to do is I will just, these are already cut open, but let me come over to this camera so I can lay this down. So I usually start and I'll go, I'll, I'll go slightly. I won't dig it in. You don't want to dig it in because if you dig it in, what can happen is you could possibly go too deep and cut through your um, the fabric behind it that you don't want to cut through. It is so much better if you take your time and just maybe take a few slices. You can always go a little bit deeper in the big, you know, once you do a layer and you'll say, oh, that's not deep enough. Then you could go a little bit deeper and then go a little bit deeper. And now you can see that in this design, I have two different colors. I have a peak and a purple. And then you could just fuzz it up. When you put this in the washer, it will, it will become a, a little more uh, fuzzier. You can also take a chenille brush if you've seen, um, if you know what a chenille brush is. Um, it's it's a brush. It's a nylon bristle brush, but it's not stiff nylon um, like we would scrub our floors with. It's it's a softer brush, but it is nylon. And if you just give it a slight little spritz of water and you use that brush, that will help bring um, the texture of the of the fuzziness of the velvet, if you will. So. 
there. So that I, I like those designs. I think I have those on a few different few different things. They do take time to sew out because you are doing satin stitches one on top of the other. So just be patient with it. You'll be good. Okay. One more texture. Wow. We're almost done. I can't believe that. Uh, one more texture I have is, let me go over here. This one may not look like very much at all, but it is actually a fringe design. And I had to find my seam ripper or my scissors here. So this design, you can see it has um, a few different colors in there. So for the fringe itself, and it's not fringed yet because I haven't made it into fringe yet, but it calls for two different colors. And again, what this does, very similar to what the Thread Velvet does, is it allows you to have... Um, not texture, but depth to it. So, and it's, it is satin stitches again, just coming out like this. And this center is what holds it in place. So this center is very important. And if we flip this, if you look at the back right here, you can see all of the white stitching. That is my bobbin stitching. And I'm, I'm walking around looking for a pair of little scissors. Those are, um, that's my bobbin, my bobbin thread. And you want to make sure that you use a contrasting bobbin. So funny story. I was um, out last year and we used this and I'll, I'll come back to my face while I tell the story. Um, we were using this particular design on one of our event projects and one gal wanted to do a white and silver daisy. And when it was all done, it was very pretty. Um, it came out really nice. The problem was we had to kind of guess where we were cutting the bobbin thread because you are cutting your bobbin thread for that, that to peak gum fringe. So you want to use a contrasting bobbin if you can, so that when you flip it over, you know exactly where you're cutting because you don't want to cut any of your colored stitching that is at your actual flower. You want to stay within the bobbin stitching. Okay. So, and that's where this is. So all of these little threads here are driving me nuts. So, and like I said, we guessed, hoping that she didn't have more of her thread coming to the back than, uh, than normal. We had this nice thirds. So if we just cut this and see, I am just cutting into the bobbin thread only. And again, take your time. There's no rushing here. I promised myself that this was going to be the year that I take my time with my sewing and start enjoying the process because it's the process is the reason why we started sewing in the first place. So I just, sometimes things still don't work out. I'm still rushed to do stuff, but on some things I said, you know what, I'm just going to take my time. Again, this is why you want to take your time because you see what happened? I kind of cut into it. I'm also at a funky angle trying to do this on camera. Oops. I would not normally be doing it at this angle. Keep that in mind. All right, let me just go. This is just a practice thing. This wasn't a good project. So, and then when we flip it over, you start having that wonderful fringe. And just keep pulling at it. And on the back, you will have um, your bobbin thread, obviously is you know you cut it so it's it's coming out but look at how 
how full you can get this. How cool is that? And you can digitize your own designs if you have the MySonet software. So imagine how cute that would look. I think we have a, a lion in our uh, in our library that has fringe on it that for its mane. Um, I could be wrong, but I believe there. Do you see what's happening there? So it's all, it all comes out. See how that pops up? And it's that center that keeps that intact. And that is just a wonderful texture, a wonderful dimension. And it, it can really add some, some zing to your, your, your project, whatever it is um, that you may stitching it out on. So, and a lot of these design, a lot of these techniques, they, um, you should have at least one embroidery design of all these different techniques built into your machine. Now, I, I know the icon two, the icon one, I believe the 4.5 and the other um, machines comes with a booklet that has um, the designs in it so that you know on paper what designs are built into your machine. So you could take a look through that book and find these techniques and you can stitch them out. You don't have to go to the MySonet library to get a design. You should have them right there built into your machine to give these a try. Like I said, a lot of these techniques that I showed you today, they're not new. They have been around for years and can be done on any of your, your machines. You, you're not limited um, by what machine you have. For some things, it may just be a, a few extra hoopings, that's all. But it is something that, that you could, that can be done. So um, we are almost out of time and here. I didn't think I was gonna have enough to say, but I did have enough to say. I hope that I have inspired you to try out some of these um, dimensional textural techniques on some of your finished projects. And I hope to see you again soon. I will tell you that the next fall Facebook Live is Thursday, May 18th at 2 p.m. Central, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with FOF Ambassador Nadine. I am so going to butcher her last name. So I'm not going to say it. it's Nadine. And um, the topic is to be determined. But I, I've seen Nadine's work and she is just... Wow, she's got a lot of a lot of technique, a lot of a lot of things that she can show you. So I hope you'll come back and see us again um, next week. Oh, not next week, in two weeks. And then the next My Sonet Live is May 10th, again, 2 p.m. or 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Mickey Hudson. And she's teaching you all you need to know about the background wizard and assist. So my sweater, I could have probably taken that into the background wizard and auditioned my designs right there in the software if I really wanted to. And Mickey's going to show you how to do all that um, on May 10th. So if there are no other questions, I hope you enjoyed this inspiration today and I hope to see you all again soon. Bye.